In this video I'm going to show you how you can make this a tangrams puzzle, or otherwise known as an IQ puzzle of some kind, where you place all the pieces in place, and it says level complete. So let's go. Okay, so first let's make a new 3D scene. This one is going to be our main scene. Let's save that. So I'll make a folder called objects. Next let's make another new scene. Scene, new scene. From this point on, I'm going to be using Control N. So we want other node, and this is the main bread and butter of this project. We want a CSG box 3D. All right, so this one is going to be the shape that we want to fill. So I'm going to start this name with an underscore, because it's going to be unique later. So shape, and I'm going to set the size to be 3, 1, 3. Let's go ahead and save this in the objects folder. Right, let's attach a script to the topmost level here. We'll call it underscore shape to fill. Right, so we'll leave this for right now, but we will come back to this script. Let's go back to the 3D view, and I'm going to make a new node. So control N. Let's make the shapes that we want to fill in this block. Go to other node. We want some more CSG boxes. So we'll make this first one. We're going to make an L piece, like in Tetris. So let's call this L piece. Let's go ahead and save this as well. So again, let's put this in objects. So for the size, let's make this 3 on the X. And we'll attach another node to this. So again, that's Control A. So I'm going to add another CSG box. And this one is going to be the bottom part of the L. So let's position this here. We'll keep it as 1, 1, 1. And if we scroll down, Set the position, this will be at negative 1, and for the Z, we want this to be a positive 1. So now we have this L shape here. This is going to be used to fill in the shape to fill that we made earlier. Let's go ahead and attach a script to this. So click attach script, and we want to call this script move and place, with underscores separating. So at the top here, I'm going to put in this part. So this we're calling it moving piece. So we can reference this script in other scripts. The shape to fill is the shape that we're going to be trying to fill up. We want to know if we currently have this piece selected, like if it's the piece that we're trying to move currently. The starting material, the material that we want to have when the game starts. And we're going to blink that on and off. We want to get track the current material that it should use, whether it's blinking, so that's when we'll have no material. So we use export here so that it shows up in the inspector on the side. So if we select this, sometimes you have to deselect and reselect. See starting material. Let's select new standard material 3D. Then click on the white sphere. Let's set the material here. So I'm going to use basically no green. We do want some small amount of blue here, so this will have a, an orange tint. Once we've set that, let's press save on that. Let's go up to the root directory here. And we'll make a new folder for materials. And we can call this orange. Right, cool, so I'm going to minimize this by clicking on the orange sphere again. Okay, so inside of the ready section, we're going to have this code here. We want to have the shape that we want to fill up. Well, it's the shape to fill. And let's go ahead and make this change material to use. So the way this works, when the game starts up here in ready, we're going to call this, which is going to run forever, but because we use a wait, it won't crash the program or freeze it. So we wait every 0.6 seconds, and then we run all of this code after that. So if we're currently not selected, well, we want to use the original orange material. If our material to use is currently nothing, let's make it blink in that case, so change it back to the starting material. Otherwise, let's set the material to nothing. This will create a blinking effect. Next, let's create an input section. So this is how we're actually going to move around the piece. So if we're not currently selected, then we don't want to do anything with this piece. We're just going to return, and so the function's going to stop. But if we got to down here, that means we must be selected. Let's add in all of our movement. So let's set up the keybinds for this. So we'll go to Project Settings up at the top, Input Map. So let's add in all these in the Add New Action. I'm going to have move underscore left, add that, move underscore right. Let's also have move away and to move closer. 
Now let's set the keys for each of these, so we'll just click the plus button. So you have to press the key, then press OK. And while we're here, let's add in one more action. When we want to place down the piece into the puzzle at its current position, we'll call that drop. And if we ever mess up and want to restart the level, we can add that too, so we'll just have restart. So I'm going to make drop the spacebar, and restart, make that R. Now, inside the input, these actions, we want to have our pieces move on grid system, so that's why we're uh, taking away exactly one or adding one. Right, next, let's add in the code for when we want to drop. So for that, make our Y zero, and when we want to restart, just to reload the current scene. Right now, since some of our pieces, like the L piece, consist of both the main part and other parts, let's add in a section to actually update the material. So inside the a while true loop, but make sure we're lined up outside of the else block. All right, so we're also going to have some events. So let's set up a global system for that. So I'm going to make a new script inside the objects folder. So we'll call that globals and actually make this accessible from everywhere. We go back to the project settings and we go to auto load. I'm going to select the path that we just made that globals script in and press add on the side. So now we can access this script by using the globals keyword and then a dot. So let's start with the signal for when a piece is dropped. Save that and then let's go back to our move and place script. So when we drop, we want to trigger that signal. So to trigger that signal, because we just named our globals script globals in the auto load, we can say globals dot piece dropped signal dot emit. This will signal to everything that's subscribed or connected to that signal to run its code. Let's go ahead and create our other pieces. So I'm going to make a new node. So for me, that's Control N. It's another CSG box 3D. This one is going to be the small L. So let's name it that. Similar to before, except I'll make it size of two. And let's attach another CSG box. This one will be the size of one. We want to change the position to be at negative 0.5. But for the Z, positive one. So it's just a smaller version of that other one that we had. Let's also make this material different. So let's attach that script that we had before, the move and place script. So attach that on to the small L. Don't attach it to the sub child, otherwise it'll get moved to twice essentially. So on the small L, let's make a new material. Click the white circle. This one, I'll make it more of a pink color. And let's save that. This one up here, so drag it directly. Same for the inner one. So we need one more piece. Let's go ahead and create that. So we have the large L, the small L. Now let's make a two by one piece. CSG box. This one doesn't have any children, because this is all that we need. Stay at two by one. But let's attach that script. Now we can set the starting material, now that it has the script. This one I'll make a blue color. And save it. Sure, we will apply this. as a blue color now. Let's make sure to save this scene. And same for our small L. Let's make sure to save it. All right, let's open up the shape to fill. We can go ahead and set a material if we want. So we're not setting that in our script. I will make this one green. Now let's enter the script for the shape to fill. We created this earlier, but we didn't add anything to it. So this shape to fill is going to be in charge of checking when the level is complete. So let's make this check level complete function. So this looks like a lot. 
let me explain what it's doing. So when we move the pieces to be inside of this shape to fill, we're going to make them subtract. That's why we wait for a bit here, because it takes some time for the bounding box to get updated after, after we've made changes to it. So when there's nothing left, that's when we know we've completed the level, because we filled in the entire shape completely. Otherwise, we're going to put back the shapes, which let's add these signals as well. So in our globals, let's add these three signals. Check answer. This will be when we want to check if what the player has entered is correct, when they actually did get it correct, say that the level was complete. And if they got it wrong, then we want to put back the shapes that we merged in to the shape to fill temporarily. So back inside of the shape to fill. That's why we say put back shapes dot emit. Okay, let's go to our main scene. And let's attach a new script to that. This is going to be for the game controller. So let's add these variables here. So in case we want to add some unique levels in the future, so we don't have to say what all the pieces we have available are, we're just going to search through and find all of them. We want to know which piece we currently have selected, and we're just going to track the shape to fill object. In preparation, let's set up the main scene on the side here. So let's attach our shape to fill. Let's add a camera. Let's add an omni light. And let's add all of the pieces that we created. So that's the L piece. The 2 by one And the small L. Just for my preference of the order that I like to move them. I'm going to put the L piece, then the small L, then the 2 by one This will affect the order that the player switches between which piece they're controlling. Let's set everything up here. So let's move the camera first. You can move around based on what you have set in your editor settings. So let's angle the camera downwards. And you can preview what it looks like here. I'm also going to move the camera back a bit. And let's move these pieces to not be in the way. And small correction. Let's make the small L piece. I think it's that it actually is going to line up. So I'm going to move the single tile here. Change its position to be positive 0.5. So if we save that and go back to the main scene, you can see it now the intended way to solve this is actually going to work. So let's go ahead and set all three of these to be at a Y value of 1. So you can select multiple by holding shift. So the intended solution is for the puzzle to look a little bit like this. And things will fit more precisely once we adjust the values. But let's put those back where they were. So let's set all of them to be on 0.5 increments. You can see we don't want this. So this is basically zero is what that should be. That one looks good. The small L piece, let's set that to be a five. And the two by one, negative one and three. This will make things grid aligned. And to prevent Z fighting, where things are overlapping with their textures, let's enter the shape to fill and make sure you have the top node selected. We'll shrink this down a tiny bit, so we'll make it 2.9 instead of 3. And I'll do 0.75. So if we save that and go back to the main scene, I should fix that for later. Now that we have the scene set up, let's add in these lines here. When we drop a piece, we're going to subtract it. If we got it wrong, we want to show the shapes again. And when the level is complete, we'll have a function for that. So when we complete a level, this game is just currently going to have one level, so we can restart the scene when they complete it. When we want to use subtract from main, then we're just going to go through all of the pieces, and we want to set their parent as the shape to fill. 
that way we can make them a subtract. So this line here is really just setting this, the operation. This determines how this shape affects its parent CSG box. So for example, I move this into the shape to fill, make that its parent, and say to subtract. You can see that area does not show anymore. So that's what we're going to do in our game. So I'm just going to undo that. So let's continue editing our game controller. So let's add in the show shapes. We have explanation for the show shapes and subtract from main functions. So when we want to show all of the shapes, we go through all of them, and then we set their operation to union. So this means additive compared to subtracting. So when we want to check their answer, that's when we subtract from main. We use the subtract operation, and we want to make their parent the shape to fill, so that that's where they're subtracting from. We want to check if they were correct, so if there was nothing left of the shape to fill, then that means that they won. So next we want to have the shape to fill, and we just set that based on getting it from the tree. Then we want to look at all of the children in the scene, and here's a trick we can use. Because we have shape to fill, and these other pieces, we can filter out all of the nodes that are CSG box 3D, make it so we don't count the shape to fill. We can also confirm that the node name does not begin with an underscore. That'll get those filtered. Then we want to have set state at current index. So with this, we're going to set a node, or a piece in this case, to be selected as the new state. So when the game first starts, we want to select the first node. We want to add in this input section here. So we want to make sure we have a switch piece functionality. So inside of our input map, make sure that you have drop, restart, and switch piece is this new one. So we want to deselect the current piece, the new piece that we want to select. Just select the next one in the list. But then when we get to the last piece, we want to wrap back around, so that's why we use this modulo, and we want to select this new piece. So now inside of our main scene, uh, I have changed the light to have a range of 25, and I changed this bar here. It's now like really straight here. Energy I set to 1.5, and indirect energy I set to 6. So when we run the game here, we have our pieces, and we should be able to move things around. Maybe let's move the camera up a little bit. That looks good. Uh, I will start with my orange piece a little further back. Position, let's set the Z negative 3, and set the X to be 0. And sure, let's move this piece to the left side. So to do that, do negative 2.5. And if you want to select them in counterclockwise order, like I do, then I will move the 2 by 1 above the small l. So if we run this now, I'm selecting this one. Let's put it there. There we go. So we currently have it set up so that it auto restarts the level. Let's show something that they actually completed it. So we can add a canvas layer. We can add a label. Put the text as a level complete. Set the font size. Let's make that like 80 actually. And let's also center this label. So anchor is preset. So just center. And I know it's going to show at the beginning here. Yes, that's where we want it we don't want it to show by default. Let's attach a script to this. Sure, we'll call it label. So we're going to use the level complete signal from before, and then by default we hide it, and when we complete the level, then we reveal. So let's try that now. And we restart the scene. Cool. So if you wanted to, you could add more levels to this. Uh, we will stop this tutorial here, so hope you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.